Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to designing a solar and lithium ion battery powered charger slash power source and this is part one in a two part series. Before I get started, I'll just mention please support Forstronics on Patreon where you can access exclusive content including exclusive video content, code, hardware design files, schematics, things like that and there'll be some exclusive content from this video series as well. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Forstronics YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, please hit the thumbs up and also spread the word. All right, let's get started. Okay, in this series, we're gonna be designing a solar and lithium ion battery powered charger slash power source. And the reason I say charger slash power source is I think this design could be used in two different ways. You could use this as sort of a portable charger to charge your phone or other you know, device outdoors or on the go because it'll have a solar panel, you can bring it where you want. It also can be charged from USB power. It has a USB connector if you want to connect your phone to it and charge it. But it's also going to have a 5 volt output. So another way you could use this design is you could leverage it for powering like an outdoor IoT project. So you can think of the solar panel to charge the battery and the battery can power your, you know, your sensors and some type of wireless microcontroller that's sending data over some type of wireless network. So you can kind of use it in those two different ways. So that's the way, what I was thinking of when I came up with this uh, video series. Like I said, it's probably gonna be a two part series. In part one, we'll look at an overview of the design. We'll look at the power output characteristics of a solar cell, because it's important to understand what the power output of a solar cell looks like when you're using it in a design. And then we'll start reviewing some of the circuits in the design, including the boost converter and the USB connectors that are gonna be in the design. The, the design's gonna have two USB connectors, one for input power, one for output power. Of course, the one for input power, you don't necessarily have to use. You could just use the solar panel. Also, I'll mention, part of what I'm gonna show in this video series, I've covered in other video series, namely the boost converter, aspects about lithium ion batteries and the USB connectors. So I'm gonna go over that stuff pretty quickly. And then in the video description, I'll have links to other videos if you wanna see more detail in those topics. Then in part two, it's about demoing the design, showing some example measurements in the design to sh show how it's working, and then finish reviewing the charging and isolation circuits. So we'll do a deep dive into charging and isolation circuits in part two. And then the hardware design files, the schematics, the bomb, the Gerber files, things like that will all be available for Forstronics Patreon members. Okay, here's a high level block diagram of the design we're gonna work on. So this design, basically runs off of battery power when USB power is not plugged in. So the battery puts out a certain voltage, it's gonna be lower than five volts, and then we use a boost regulator, and a boost regulator takes a lower voltage and turns it into a constant higher voltage output. And I'm gonna use the same boost regulator circuit I used in another video, and I'll provide a link to that. But the idea is a battery puts out a voltage, typically when the battery is fully charged, a lithium ion battery will put out about 4.2 or 4.1 volts, and then once you start pulling power from that battery, the voltage will slowly drop. And I talk about the battery's output curve in another video series, which I'll provide a link to. But the idea is the battery does not put out a constant voltage, so we need a regulator circuit to turn that battery output into a constant five volts. The solar panel, the solar panel does not feed the boost regulator, namely because the solar panel doesn't have enough power. We wanna be able to have a boost regulator that outputs 500 milliamps and the solar panel that, I use, that I'm using does not do that. So the solar panel is just gonna charge the battery. So when the battery's low and there's sunlight on the solar panel, it'll feed current into the battery to charge it. Now you can use the solar panel to charge the battery while the battery's powering some kind of output circuit. And then we have the input USB power. So that is gonna be about a five volts and that can be used to charge the battery, but it can also be used to provide output power. And if you notice, I have diodes and switches in the diagram. So there's diodes and there's switches, and those switches will be MOSFETs in the real design. Those are meant to isolate the different power sources based on their priority. So whenever the USB is plugged in, it takes priority. So it'll cut off power from the solar panel and provide power to the battery as well as the output circuit. If the USB power is not connected, we don't want any stray voltage on it. So we have those diodes to block things from the battery and the solar power. But anyway, the isolation of the different power sources and the switching will be covered in detail in part two. Another thing about this design is I chose a battery, um, certain battery capacity, and I also chose a certain solar panel with a certain power output. You can tune that for your design purposes. Maybe you need a smaller battery. Maybe you don't need as big of a battery. 
you want a lower cost, you don't need a lot of power, you can use a smaller battery than I did, uh, but maybe you want a bigger solar panel. So the idea is we'll, we'll point out stuff in the design where you can sort of pull levers on the charging circuit and other circuits to basically control what type of power you might need in your design, how fast you want to charge the battery, how slow you want to charge the battery, things like that. We'll discuss some of those trade-offs. Okay, here's a picture of our finished circuit over on the right and then the solar panel and the battery cell that I'll be using for the design. And if you look to the right at the finished circuit, you can see the two, two USB connectors. The one on the left is the input power. The one on the right is the output power, both USB-C. And then I have a green screw terminal to connect the solar panel to. And then I also have some pins at the top right where you can access the five volts if you don't want to use the USB connector. And then I don't have it on this one. This is sort of my prototype board, but I have a, a connector for the battery to connect to. You might also notice there's a big mechanical switch in there. And so all the power source isolation is done with diodes and MOSFETs. And I'll talk about that in part two. I did put in this switch and it's sort of optional. Like just say you wanted to use this circuit for like camping. When you go camping, you want to have a portable power source. If you want to leave the battery connected, I like the idea of having a mechanical switch where you can totally cut off power so you're not draining the battery, you know, over you know a six month period when it might be sitting on a shelf. So that's why I have that, sh that switch there. That's sort of optional. If you're doing sort of an IoT design that's sort of always on, then you probably wouldn't need that switch there. Here I'm showing the solar panel and the battery, and this time the solar panel is turned upside down. I'm using this solar panel by Voltaic. So if you ever worked with solar panels or, or especially solar cells, they sometimes can be a little fragile. I like this company Voltaic. They basically take a solar cell or solar panel and they put it on a PCB board that you can easily interface your electronics with. So that's why I went with that company. Of course, you can use whatever solar cell or solar panel you want to. And then I'm using a pretty beefy lithium ion cell. It can do up to 2000. Well, it's rated for 2000 milliamp hours or two amp hours is what that means is the battery can put out two amps for an hour before it's fully discharged, or it could be one amp for two hours, so forth and so on. Okay, let's talk about the power output or IV curve of a solar cell or solar panel, because that's going to be important for our design. So on the left in red, you can see the IV curve. And so you have current on the y-axis and voltage on the x-axis. And for the blue curve, you have power on the y-axis. And so if we look at the red curve, this represents the common curve you'll see from a solar panel or solar cell. Depending on the photovoltaic technology that you're using, the curve might be shaped a little different. But this is the idea. It's sort of a nonlinear curve. And what this curve means is, unlike a power supply that's putting out, let's say, a constant 5 volts or a constant 12 volts, depending on whatever the load, however the load changes or how, however how much current the load's drawing, that power supply maintains a constant voltage, whether it's 5 volts or 12 volts or 3.3 volts. As long as the load's not pulling too much current, it'll keep that steady output voltage. And that's typically what we want in electronics. But with a solar panel, it doesn't do that, right? So depending on what the load value is, what, you know, what type of impedance the load has, depends where it's operating on this IV curve. So as the load's current consumption or voltage consumption changes, where it operates on this curve changes, and so it's getting a different mix of voltage and current. Also, keep in mind, this curve is static that I'm showing, but in real life, as the light source varies, like let's say you're outside in a clear day and you're getting a good IV curve, but all of a sudden the cloud passes over it, this curve is going to drop. The power of the, the solar cell is putting out is going to drop because the power it puts out is directly proportional to how much you know, sunlight you have on it or artificial light. And so the idea is this curve is also of, often a moving target. So that's why we need some type of circuit to regulate that power to create the voltage or current that we want from the solar panel. If you look, there's a VMP and an IMP that MP stands for max power. Sometimes it's called max power point. And the idea is typically on a solar curve, an IV curve, that knee where you get the voltage time current times current, that's where you get the maximum output power. So that's where you want to operate on that curve. And so regulators try to stay close to that knee to get the max power output. And then in blue, that's just showing the, the max power output point that corresponds to the V times I point. When you're looking at solar panels and solar cells, one thing you have to keep in mind is 
whatever their max power rating is, you're rarely, if ever, going to get that amount of power out of them, right? Whenever you see the rating for the max power on a solar cell or a solar panel, that represents the ideal you know, sunlight conditions on the solar panel. So when, when you're looking for a solar panel, don't count on that max power, especially if you're in an area where you don't have strong sunshine. You're probably never going to get that max power out. It's important to understand like when you're trying to do your power budget for a design to understand that when you're picking a solar panel. A lot of times what you got to do is you got to buy one and test it in your area or where you're going to be operating your design to try to get a good idea of how much power you're going to get from it. I'm not going to talk about a lithium ion battery curve. I talk about that in another video, but uh, I just mentioned that there and I'll, I'll have the link to that video. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the circuits in here. So I'm showing the boost converter. So if you remember from the high level diagram, the boost converter takes that voltage from either the USB power or from the battery power, most likely the battery power, and converts it to a constant five volts. And I'm showing this in my EagleCAD software, which I do for PC, which I use for PCB layout. And the idea is this red square is the boost converter. You can see some, some common electrical parts, capacitors, this inductor. And these green lines represent electrical connections. And whenever you see the same name, such as VCC here and VCC here, that represents an electrical connection where they have the same name. So keep that in mind. And this is the same circuit I showed in another video where we talked about lithium ion battery charging. So I'm not gonna go into detail. You can see some of the calculations I did. I got all that information from the data sheet from this uh, TI boost converter. You can see the model number there. So in that other video series, I go into much more detail on this, but this boost converter is highly efficient. It's sort of made for battery applications. It has about a 1.5 megahertz switching frequency, which is pretty high for a boost converter. And the idea is typically the higher the switching frequency, the better the efficiency. And this boost converter can take a wide range of input voltages all the way down to less than one volt and convert it into five volts. This boost converter also has a special feature, which they call down conversion mode. So this boost, a boost converter by definition is supposed to take a lower voltage and make it a higher voltage. Well, if we get a USB five volt input, that's the same value that this is trying to output. So this has a down conversion mode where it's made to sort of work with multiple power sources. So it can take five volts in and put five volts out. It can actually take up to 5.5 volts in and put five volts out. And it seamlessly switches between this boost converter mode and this down conversion mode. So this is sort of a, a nice chip. I like it. It's made by Texas Instruments. Now where you see VCC, that represents the input power. So if we're running off battery power, that's the battery power. If we plug in USB power, the battery power will be cut off and the VCC represents the input USB power. The five volts represents the output power, the output voltage. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at this because the outputs and inputs are sort of on different sides. If you look here, we have a, a resistor divider network and you can see a calculation here that I did. And the idea is this divider network is meant to cut off the battery when it gets too low. So as I discussed in my other video, you don't wanna over discharge a lithium ion battery because it can cause heating problems. It can destroy the battery, things like that. So this circuit, basically when the battery gets a little too low, this uh, boost converter will turn into like an open switch to cut off that power flow to preserve the battery. Once again, this has a lot of features that are battery friendly. Another nice thing about it too is when you cut off a battery, the current flow from a battery after it gets to a certain voltage level, that battery's voltage typically jumps back up when it's not getting uh, current out. But this circuit's actually smart. So if the battery voltage drops too low, it cuts it off but it won't turn back on until the battery gets to a, a certain voltage threshold. That way you don't get this seesawing or toggle effect where you get five volts out and then it shuts off, five volts out, shuts off. So it's a, once again, it's a nice boost converter. I like it. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna show in part one is the USB connector. So these boxes represent the USB-C connectors. This one on the left is the input. This one on the right is the output. Now, since we're just using the USB connectors for power purposes, I'm not using any of these uh, other connections where you would put data on them. And I, and I have a video where I talk about USB-C connectors and how to implement them in detail. So I'm just gonna go over this quickly, but the input USB connector is configured as an upstream facing port, which means it's whatever connects to it, it's gonna tell it, hey, I consume power, I don't source power. And it tells it that by these pull down resistors, these 5.1K pull down resistors that communicates to the device it connects to is, I want power, I don't source power. 
So that's why this is configured as for input power. The other one is configured for output power. And so it has two resistors that are pulled up. And so when a device connects to this, like your phone, it tells your phone, hey, I can source you power. I can charge your battery. And the value of these resistors tells the device you connect to it, hey, I can only source 500 milliamps. So I can do five volts of 500 milliamps. You can configure it for higher power. In fact, USB-C connectors, that's one of their benefits is they can put out a lot of power. This one, since you know it's a portable charger, we're only going to put out 500 milliamps. Now these diodes and some of this other stuff and these other connectors, I'm going to talk about that more in part two. So anyway, so in part one, we covered the overall design plan, a little bit about uh, solar panels output power. We looked at some of the circuits. And in part two, we're going to look at a nice demo of this design. And I'm excited for this design. This is a fun design. And in part two, we'll look at, it, we'll look at some example measurements and uh, we'll finish off talking about the charging circuit and the PCB layout in detail. If you have any questions from this video, use the comment section. And if you have anything you think I missed, feel free to share it with others in the comment section. Thank you for watching. I'll see you back here for part two.